Alright, hello everyone and welcome. So today I'm going to tell you guys how I started with the piano, okay? How on earth did I decide that I want to learn this instrument, alright? Alright, so the first thing that I want to say to you guys is most people think that you need the talent to play any instrument, alright? A talent that you are born with, alright? I disagree. You see, I never was born with the ability or talent or gift to play the piano, you know, just like Michael Jackson wasn't born knowing how to moonwalk, alright? He did, he developed the ability to moonwalk, alright? He wasn't born with it. So people are quick to say, you know, oh, you are so talented or, uh, you know, I wish I could do that. And those exact same people that, that say these things like you are so talented or whatever, those are the same people that don't realize that the, this talent is nothing more than the result of endless practice and practice and practice. So what I want to say is talents are developed, alright? They, you are not born with a talent, alright? Remember that. Alright, so in my case, I was never born with the desire to want to learn how to play the piano, alright? It came naturally to me in though in kind of odd ways. Alright, so when I was nine years old, alright, <laughs> nine-year-old Anthony, I was a choir boy. I was a fat little nine-year-old choir boy. <laughs> I mean, obviously I was a choir boy. What what else does nine-year-olds do? I mean, <laughs> and one day after choir rehearsal, a random lady, from my perspective, a random lady came to me and said to me like, Wow, you can really sing well. What, don't you want to learn the piano? And then I was hysterical. <laughs> that was probably the fastest yes I ever gave in my entire life. <laughs> and that is how my piano journey began, right then and there. So every day after school, I would go to piano lesson, you know, it, it learned something new. It, it kind of became a habit, just like any other school subject would become a habit, you know? But I definitely wasn't the cool kid, though. Out of the entire school, there was probably like, I think, four music students. So I definitely wasn't the cool kid. So I went to lesson every day. And in that same year, I think, I played my first piano exam. It was my pre-grade one exam. Right? So it wasn't even my grade one exam. It was like pre-grade one exam. All right, it was like single note exams basically. And so it turns out that I was kind of good. <laughs> I was a good little piano player. All right, who would have thought? And I want you guys to remember that I did not exactly choose out of my own to learn the piano. All right some random lady just basically came to me to little nine-year-old me and told me all right you are going to play the piano on my pre-grade one exam or right, i received 97 percent let that sink in all right 97 percent now at this time i was about 10 years old maybe i remember when i got the news that i received 97 percent i was so glad I had a ludicrous amount of joy and energy I remembered like yesterday. That moment gave me so much motivation that it literally thrusted me to where I am today. Literally. And so the days and the lessons passed, alright? Another day, another lesson. The days go by and so does the lessons go by. Day by day. Now, my piano journey isn't exactly just sunshine and roses and all good, alright? It's actually quite the opposite. So, since my teachers knew, or one of my teachers knew what I was capable of, alright, my talent, they, they kind of pushed me, you know, to, they pushed me to limits I wasn't really comfortable, I was like 10 years old, you know? They expected more from me that I was able to provide. It was insane. So basically the lessons went from sincere and down to earth to like screaming and why can't you do this and why can't you do that, you know? At the time I was about 12 years old, all right? That was the last year of middle school for me. And so high school came and naturally my motivation finally crippled. 
<laughs> God. So when I was a high school freshman, you know, my first year in high school, I had no intention to learn the piano any further. Any further. My desire for the piano finally faded. In fact, I hated the piano, <laughs> quite literally. I remember the days when I didn't have to go to, like, my piano lessons, and the relief I felt was amazing at the time and just like that the first year of high school went by and i didn't touch the piano once all right the entire first year didn't touch the piano once and as the cliched story goes i was starting to feel empty you know you know i started to miss these teachers like screaming at me from all over the place i don't know am i weird so in this year i went not touching the piano I realized that I've grown to be obsessed over the piano. So this year of me thinking that I hate the piano, turns out I've grown a obsession. Interestingly enough, you guys know Lang Lang, all right, the famous pianist? He has kind of the same story. He also um, thought he hated the piano, but then at, at a point in his life, he realized, you know, I need this thing in my life. And so I started again with lessons in my life. Then at that point I was about 14 years old. My new teacher that was she was kind of nice, but only if I practiced, you know. And from that day on, I continued taking lessons every day until the last day of high school. Every day. Now, after high school, all right, <laughs> the real nightmare started, which was college, okay? university and that was two years ago now college university was fun it is still fun it will always be fun all right college is crazy i had great friends i had great lecturers i had great people around me college was fun university was fun all right but that the fact that it being fun was the problem. And so I realized that college forced my dad to pay 3500 USD every year, which we don't have, only for them to tell me what books to read and for my piano lecturers to tell me that I should go practice. All right? I already know these things. My dad doesn't have to pay an insane amount of money just for them to tell me that. I already know this, alright? And so I did what any sane person would do. And any success addict, alright? So, I dropped out of music school, essentially. I became a college dropout. Now, people at the university, they told me, like, Anthony, you are one month away from getting your first year completion certificate. And I told them, I don't care and so i told them you know you are wasting my time and you are wasting my dad's money and i'm pretty sure that that is not the way to success okay at least not for me and that's when i realized that if i waited like five more years if if i studied five more years all right like uh, to get my masters or whatever i would have done the exact same thing i would my goal always was to become an online musician or an online personality of music so whether I do that now or in five years I'm just wasting time all right but anyhow a year has passed since I dropped out and here I am <laughs> still unsuccessful but but hey it's been one year all right and it's fine I'm okay with it I'm I chose to take that responsibility and I chose to live with that fear of not being um, you know becoming successful I chose to decline the security the uh, university provides you the security of a job and all those BS now at the time of recording this one year into my journey I have 502 YouTube subscribers and 7600 instagram followers which i think is nuts all right that's i think that's good growth for someone totally unknown and in a span of a single year all right 
I know I can do better though. And this is just a shout out for the one or two people that watch my videos, alright? I love you guys. And I promise that I will make this YouTube game work. I, I promise it's going to work out someday, sometime. But until then, we are going to fight and we are going to work hard. So, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Peace.